So there are four formulas we should have memorized. What are they? <laughs> Which is what? R equals square root of x squared plus y squared. <laughs> Tan theta. <laughs> theta equals y over x. Or theta equals tan inverse y over x. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alternate. alternate. Good job. All right, so those are the four formulas we need to have memorized. You don't just put them on your cheat sheet. You should put them on your cheat sheet as a backup, but your cheat sheet for the last 10 minutes is not going to be enough for you to use these formulas on the entire test. So these have to be in your brain. Okay, we got them memorized. All right, so the first equation that we're going to convert is R equals 5 cos theta. And we are converting it into rectangular form, which is going to feel more comfortable for us because we know what those equations are supposed to look like when we get them to be recognizable. So we got to make some substitutions and get it into a recognizable equation. Right, Kalia? Mm -hmm. Marvelous. All right, so what should I do first? Yeah, we're going to multiply by R. So the reason that we're multiplying by r is because if this part right here becomes r squared, I'm still okay. And this part right here has to have an r with it for me to be able to do anything. Okay? So when I multiply the entire equation by r, I get r squared equals 5r cos theta. Then what do I do? Okay, so the right side is 5x. The left side is x squared plus y squared. And since it has an x squared plus y squared, what kind of equation is it? <coughs> it's a circle. It's a circle. And this part has an x with it. So this is a circle that is not centered at 0. We need to move the 5x over, and we need to do completing the square. Okay, so I'm going to call this x squared minus 5x, leave some space to complete the square, and I'm going to have it equal 0. So I just took that 5x, I moved it over to the other side. So at this point, we are having flashbacks of the very happy memories from the conic section. <laughs> so what do I do to complete the square? So negative 5 divided by 2, it does not actually divide by 2. So I'm just going to leave it as the fraction, negative 5 over 2. What happens when I square 5 over 2? 25 over 4. So I'm going to say plus 25 over 4 right here, plus 25 over 4 right there. So I have something squared plus y squared equals something. So x minus 5 over 2, and it equals 25 over 4. So this is a circle that is centered at positive 5 over 2, comma 0, and has a radius of 5 over 2. So this is a circle. We're done. That's our recognizable equation. So the reason that we wrote it as this and not this would be because Miss Rice wants it in standard form. Okay? If I wanted it in what we call the general conic form, you could have just subtracted the 5x over, let it equal 0, and say that you were done. But this is the standard form. This is where you can see the center and the radius and graph it if you want. Okay? All right. How do we feel about that process? It's kind of okay? Yeah. Um, how did we, get two? we just divided by 2. You always divide by 2. We in the past have worked with a lot of even numbers. So when we divided by 2, it was nice. This one just happens to look weird because when you divide by 2, it stays a fraction. 
Okay, so let's try another one. Do you guys want another one like that, or are you okay with a different type? Different one? So that means we've mastered this one. If I saw this one, I'd be good. Okay, let's do another one like this. We're going to do r equals 10 sine theta. r equals 10 sine theta. All right, what should I do first? Multiply by r. So I have r squared equals 10 r sine theta. And then what do I do? So this is x squared plus y squared equals 10 y, good. And since I see that x squared plus y squared, what is that? It's a circle. And since this equals 10 y and it doesn't just equal a number, that means it's a circle that does not have a center at zero. So what do I have to do? Okay, so I have x squared plus y squared minus 10 y, I'm gonna leave some space, equals zero. Divide by 2, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5, okay. And then when I square it, I get 25. And if I add 25 to the left side, add 25 to the right side. So I have x squared plus something squared equals something y minus 5 oh. equals oh hey Liam I was like what what hooded person just came in my room I had you missed it Leon I had my angry face on and then I was like oh it's Leon come come right in fellow student of ours see ya all right so we have a circle centered at 0, 0,5 with a radius of 5. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, we're going to make this we're going to make this more difficult. Okay. Negative 2 cos theta plus 18 sine theta. Oh, Miss Rice, I hate you. Make it harder. <laughs> That's too easy. Make it worse, please. All right. No complaining. What do I do? Multiply both sides by r. Multiply both sides by r. Okay. So I have r squared equals. Negative 2r cos theta Okay And then what do we do? x squared plus y squared Negative 2x plus 18y so we see x squared plus y squared, which tells us what? Circle. It's still a circle. It does not equal a plain number. So that tells us that circle is not centered at zero. If it just said x squared plus y squared equals five, that'd be a circle that's centered at zero. But this one says x squared plus y squared equals other letters. So it is not centered at zero. So what do we do? So x squared plus two x, leave some space. Uh, y squared minus 18y, leave some space, equals 0. Divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 and negative 18 divided by 2. Okay. And then what do we do with each of these numbers? We square them. So... 
One squared is one, so we're going to add one here and add one here. And negative 9 squared is 81, add 81, add 81. So we have something squared plus something squared equals something. X plus 1. Y minus 9. Mm -hmm. Equals eighty-two. <laughs> All right. So at this point, how are we actually feeling? We feel we feel better. We just we needed a few. We needed a few. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's let's try another one. It's going to look very similar, but it is completely different, okay? So this one says R equals 3 secant theta. Ooh. What made this one different? It's a secant, not a cos. Yeah, so I'm going to rewrite this as R equals 3 over cos. And so that's what makes this problem completely different, is that the cos is actually not with the 3. It's underneath it. So this is not a circle. It's got a different, it's not a triangle. It's got a different process, though. It's not a sideways parabola. It's a line. It's a straight line. So what do we do with this? Because we, we do have a substitution for r. We do not have a substitution for plane cos theta. Yeah, you're going to multiply the cos over so it goes with the r. <laughs> so we have r cos theta equals 3. And what is r cos theta? X. X equals 3. Ooh. And what kind of recognizable equation is that? X is It's a vertical line. It's a vertical line. Yeah. Okay. So that one, it looked, it looked similar, but it was completely different. What made it different? Yeah. It wasn't a cos or a sine. If it had been a cos or a sine, it would have turned into a circle like the other ones. It was because it was a secant, so that made it a three over cos. That's what made it different, is that fraction right there. Okay, let's try another one similar to that. What about r equals negative 15 over sine theta? So what am I going to do? No. Multiply by the sign. So R sine theta equals negative 15. Y equals negative 15. So what recognizable equation is that? It's a horizontal line. Horizontal line. All right, R equals negative cosecant theta. Cosecant is one over sine. So this is R equals negative one over sine. Multiply the sine over. So R sine theta equals negative one. Y equals negative one. Yeah. Yes, I'll show you one. Well, tan problems aren't scary though. Tan problems aren't bad because remember, tan equals y over x. So tan just means if it's a tan problem, it just means it's a slanted line instead of vertical or horizontal.
Okay. All right. Okay, how do we feel about those ones? Vertical lines, horizontal lines? Those are easy? Okay. Um, how about if I write R equals 8? Do we remember from the other day when we graphed these what this is going to be? Oh, yeah. It's, the radius. it's you find the radius of eight, and you and you follow it all the way around. So what is it? It's a circle centered at zero with a radius of eight. Okay. How do we make the conversion though? Okay. So square root of x squared plus y squared equals eight. And then what do you do? Because this, this right now is not a recognizable equation, right? Then we square each side. And we get x squared plus y squared equals 64. And that is the way that we write a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 8. You're really smart. You're really smart. All right. <laughs> Uh, what this is? It's a circle, right? Oh, what I did? We knew that r was the square root of x squared plus y squared, so we just replaced it. And then right here, it did. It wasn't a recognizable equation yet because we don't normally write them with square roots over them, so we just squared each side. And so the x squared plus y squared was alone in the 64. Okay. We're going to do a similar problem. We're going to write r equals negative 3. All right. So r equals negative 3. What do I mean by that? But what does this mean if we were to like graph it right now? It's a circle, right? When they say radius of negative 3 versus radius of positive 3, do they mean anything different? No. No, same thing. Okay, so this is a circle with a radius of three. We're just following the radius of three line all the way around the circle. Can you just skip that like, whole process and just write x squared plus y squared equals? No, you have to show your work. Uh, I would like for you to show your work just because here's what I've noticed. When students do the easy problems and they do them quick like that, on test day they forget the easy ones, but they remember the difficult ones because they worked harder on the difficult ones. Does that make sense? I don't want you to take the test and be like, I remember this is simple, but I don't remember what it is. Does that make sense? So I want us to actually see where it comes from. So we're going to replace the R with what? Square root x squared plus y squared, and it equals the negative 3. Uh -huh. And this is not a recognizable equation yet. We square each side. So we end up with what? And it's a circle. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's try another one. We're going to say tan theta equals 2. This one is like halfway in polar form, but not quite all the way in polar form. Most of the problems in polar form would not say tan theta equals 2. They would say theta equals something. So this one is like somebody put it in polar form, but they did a bad job, basically. Well, do we remember what tan theta equals, though? It equals y over x. So I'm going to replace tan theta with y over x. So I have y over x equals 2. And is y over x appropriate for a recognizable equation? No. We, normally, we like y equals equations, right? So what should I do? Multiply the x. So I get y equals 2x. Is that a recognizable equation? Yeah, it's a straight line. It's just kind of slanted, right? It has a slope of 2, and it goes through a y-intercept of 0. Okay. So you just have to remember if you, see, if you see a tan theta, you're supposed to think y over x. All right. Okay, what about if I have just theta equals pi over 6? Do we remember how to graph that? 
Yeah, when we have the polar graph paper, we just locate where pi 6 is and we draw that, that straight line, right? Okay, so theta equals pi over 6. I know it's going to be a straight line. I know it goes through the center of the graph. What do I need to do? So think of your formulas. Our formulas, right? The only one that has a theta in it like this, I guess, is the tan. Tan theta equals y over x or theta equals tan inverse a y over x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tan each side. So I have tan theta equals tan of pi over 6. And what is tan theta? It's y over x. And what's tan of pi over 6? So on the unit circle, the x coordinate is root 3 over 2, the y coordinate is 1 half. So if it's tan, we would do 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. So it is 1 over root 3. What's the proper way of writing that? Okay, so this is root 3 over 3. And then is this a proper way to write this equation? No, what do we do? Multiply the x over. So y equals root 3 over 3 times x. What type of equation is it? It's a straight line, right? This is just one. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a slant. This is one that is a little bit easier to draw in the polar form because the slope of root 3 over 3 is kind of hard to graph, right? Go up root 3 over 3. I don't know how to do up root 3 accurately. All right. So this is probably one I'd rather find the angle measurement to graph it. Okay. How do we feel about those conversions? Relatively okay? All right, when you continue working on the book assignment today, the first set of problems are doing that. They're taking it from polar, converting it into rectangular. The last set of problems are gonna be just like what we did yesterday, taking rectangular and converting it into polar, okay? So what I found is that we probably needed more practice than what we did yesterday. The stuff today is a little bit easier because we're converting it into something that we know rather than converting it into something we don't know. Okay, so nose goes, grab a book. Um, no, I'd rather have you start a new paper, I think. Yeah, and it says 57 through... What does the board say? Oh, 57 is... <laughs> you will be out. It's so bad. <laughs>